In this video, we're going to learn how to dynamically filter a table of data using HyperScript. Now, HyperScript is a scripting language for client-side applications, and it was written by the same guy that made HTMX, so it pairs very nicely with HTMX if you happen to be using that. And HyperScript has this really interesting pseudocode-like syntax. It looks kind of crazy when you first see it, but it's a nice and interesting way to add interactivity to your front-end applications. So we're going to dive in now, and we're going to see an example of how to dynamically search and filter using HyperScript. Now we're going to use this very simple application here where we have a table of servers and on the right hand side we have a form that allows us to filter down the tables by the type of server. Now what we're going to do is imagine a scenario where we want to be able to search this table. So let's say we have a search input just above the table. We want to be able to type into that and for the table to dynamically update with the correct search results. And we're going to use HyperScript in order to do that. So let's go to the documentation. HyperScript is an easy and approachable language for modern web front ends. And we can see an example of the syntax on the right hand side. We have keywords or commands such as on, repeat, set, transition, and so on. Very English like terminology for defining behavior that happens on the front end. And for example, if we look below here, we have a button and then a very simple bit of HyperScript. We have the on click, which is basically an event handler listening for the click event. And when that happens, you can perform some kind of action. In this case, we are triggering an event called hello on the form element. And you can see some code below that when the form itself receives that hello event, it's gonna alert that message to the browser. So all this behavior between elements can be defined using HyperScript. What we're gonna do is we're going to go back to this project in VS Code, and we're going to start by adding HyperScript into the project. So let's copy the script tag, and we're gonna go back to VS Code, and I'm gonna to go to the project's base.html file. In the head element, we define some of the static assets. And what I'm gonna do right at the bottom, just below the HTMX import, is I'm going to paste in the script for HyperScript. And this is going to make HyperScript available in the project. So we can then go to other parts of the application, for example, index.html, and we can start defining some HyperScript on elements in the document. Now what we're gonna to do to start with is we're going to add a search bar just above this table, because of course we want to search for particular elements in the table. So we need to give users a way to type some characters in and perform that search. So we're gonna add an input just above here. So let's go back to this template. And here is where we are including the table. So just above that, I'm gonna create another div. And we're gonna give this div some classes. We're gonna give it a class of dflex, which is a bootstrap class for Flexbox. And we're going to say that the search input should take up eight out of 12 columns. And finally, let's give some margin bottom here. We're gonna give a margin bottom of three. And then what we're gonna do within here is define an input element of type text. And again, we're going to define some classes on that. So for example, form control from Bootstrap and also border primary. That's gonna give it a color around the border. And finally, let's add a placeholder here. And that's gonna say search. Once we've done that, we can close the input element and let's save this and go back to our page. When we refresh the page, you can see we have this search bar appearing above the table. Doesn't look amazing, but it's gonna do for this video. Now, currently when we type something into that, nothing is happening. We need to hook up HyperScript in this element in order for that to work. So we're gonna use HyperScript to filter down the table based on what the user is typing in here. And if we go back to the documentation, you can see that to define HyperScript, we define this underscore. So the underscore is an attribute on the HTML element and the text that you pass after the underscore, that is the code, the HyperScript code that's going to execute on that element. So let's do that now. We're gonna go back to our input here. And just after the placeholder, I'm gonna add that underscore and we're gonna set that to a string. Now what we want to do is listen for the key up event. So we're gonna say on key up. And what do we want to do when we get that key up? We only want to show the rows in the table that we have here. If that table's text content contains the text that's been input by the user. So we can write that with some HyperScript now. When we get the key up, what we want to do is we want to show the table rows in that table. So we're showing those table rows and we want to do that within the table body. But we only want to do that when the row contains the text that we've actually searched for. And we can use a conditional here using the when command. And we only want to show those table rows when it's text content. And you can see the English-like expressions here. We're only gonna show that table row when it's text content contains, and what we're gonna put in here is my value. So let's try and explain a bit what's going on here. 
on the key up event, we want to show the rows in our table when the text content within those rows contains the value that's been entered into this element, this input element on which we're defining this hyperscript. So you can use the statement my value when you have an input of any kind and you want to get the current value of that input. So let's test this out. I'm gonna save this file and go back to the table here and let's refresh the page. Now, if I was to search for nano here, let's see if this works. And you can see that this is already working. So the hyperscript that we've written on this element is capable of filtering which rows in the table are shown. For a given row, let's say this time we are searching for small. For that given row, if the text content contains what we've entered into the field, then that row will be shown Otherwise, it's not going to be shown. So that's the effect of the show when expression. We are showing particular elements, particular rows in this case, in the document when the text content contains what's been entered into the field. And this is just going to work out of the box with the HTMX code that we've written. So if I was to filter this down to only nano and micro, if I then try and search for small, nothing is going to show up in the table because that's already been filtered out. It's not in the DOM. And if we go back here and we search for micro, you can see that it filters down the two server types to only the micro types. Let's now take this a step further. We're gonna add a clear button and we're gonna attach some hyperscript to that button in order to clear the current input when that button is clicked. So let's go back to VS Code here and just below the input, I'm going to add the button. So let's paste that in here. It's a button and we're giving it standard bootstrap classes of button and button primary. If we save that and go back to the page, you can see that that appears on the right hand side. Now there's no margin at all here, so I'm gonna go back and very quickly to the input. I'm going to add another class and that's the margin right to class. And we can go back and refresh this. This is not working because I think in bootstrap five, it's actually ME for margin end. So let's try that again. And you can see we now get a little bit of margin. So in bootstrap five, it's margin end, not margin right. So let's test this out. If we try nano, and we get the table filtering, but when we hit the clear button, nothing is gonna happen. So we need to write the hyperscript code on the button element in order for something to happen when we actually click the button. So let's add the hyperscript underscore, and on the click event, we're gonna perform some kind of action. Now I'm actually gonna give this input an ID, so let me give this an ID of search. And the reason we're giving it an ID is because in the click event, we're gonna target that input because we want to clear the text away from it. Now we can use the set command in hyperscript in order to do that. And what we're gonna set here is the value of this element with the ID of search. So the element with the ID of search is this input and we can set the value of that input by referencing dot value. And what are we gonna set it to? We can use the to keyword here and we're just gonna set that to an empty string in order to clear out the search. And that's gonna clear out the search. It's gonna remove all those characters from the input. So let's save this and we're gonna test this out and we're gonna find that this does not work completely. So let's refresh this. And this time when I input nano, notice when I click the button, the text is going to be removed, but the table is not going to be unfiltered. So let's hit the button now and you can see that the text was removed, but the table remains the same. We don't get the other server types, we only have the nano types. Now the reason for this is because the filtering that happens on the table, that happens in this input, and it's this statement here, we show the table row when the text content contains the value, but the problem is that happens on the key up event. So what we need to do, as well as setting the value of that input to an empty string, we need to trigger the key up event on that element. So we're going to trigger the key up on the element with the ID of search, the input, and hopefully now, if we save this and go back to the page, when we refresh this page, this is hopefully gonna work. So let's try it out. We're going to enter nano again, and this time when we click clear, you can see that the table is back to all of the servers. We've cleared out the search, so we want to show everything. And that's what happens now. And of course, the text and the input is also cleared out. Now I want to show one final thing in this video, and this is straight out of the documentation. I'm going to link this below the video, but this example is very similar to what we've done in this video. You can see that on the key up event, we can actually perform a conditional operation here and check which key has actually been used. In this case, we check to see if the key up event was on the escape key. And if that is true, we're setting the search value to an empty string and triggering the key up. And it's only if we don't press the escape key that we filter the table using the show when expression. And actually it's a block quote here, but in our example, it's a table. So I'm actually just going to copy this code and we're going to paste it into 
our input here into the hyperscript. And this is going to happen after our own key up statement. We're going to paste this in and let me format this. So let's go over this now. When we have the key up event, we check to see is the events key the escape key. And if that's true, we set my value to an empty string. And again, my value refers to the value of an input on which this hyperscript is defined. And finally, we trigger the key up as we did before in the button. So this if statement here covers what happens if the key pressed was the escape key. But if it's any other key, we go to the else block and we show the table rows that contain the content that's been searched by the user. So the last thing to do is test this out. Let's save the file and go back to our page here. And I'm going to refresh the page and we're going to search again for nano here. And the table is filtering, everything is working fine. But if I now press the escape key here, you can see that the text from the input is removed and the filtering in the table is also removed. And we're back to the original table that contains all of our servers. So now if we press the escape key, that is going to remove what's in there. And that's because of this new hyperscript code that we've added. If the key pressed is escape, we're setting the value of the input back to the empty string and we're triggering the key up. And what triggering the key up is going to do is it's going to reevaluate this code. And this time, because the key pressed is not the escape key, it's going to go back down to the else block and it's going to show all of the table rows because every single table row contains that empty string basically. So that's all for this video. We've shown a very simple example of how to add hyperscript to a web page and how you can then use that hyperscript to dynamically filter elements in a table. And of course, this will work with any HTML, for example, a list. And the example in the documentation here is actually working with a set of quotes. And if I was to type in some text here, for example, talk, we get the quotes that contain that text. It's a very similar example, but that one doesn't use a table. It uses the block quote element. But you can see how easy this kind of dynamic interactive functionality is with HyperScript. And you get this interesting syntax as well. Some people seem to like it. Some people don't like it so much. I think it's quite cool. But of course, if you're not into that, you can use alternatives such as Alpine.js. So thanks again for watching. If this content has been useful, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving it a thumbs up on YouTube. And if the content is useful, please consider buying a coffee for the channel. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.